we're going to start chapter number four, which is isothermal reactor design. And things are going to get way more interesting because we are going to actually start developing uh, what we've seen before in chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. We're going to apply it for our reactors and especially in isothermal design. What does that mean? That means that we have no temperature changes. So we have no Q or etc. We are not going to take care on that. We're going to suppose temperatures are the same. So as usual, I'm going to show you this diagram. We've seen chapter number one, which is mole balances, our design equations. Then we saw a little bit of conversion and reactor sizing, essentially CSTR and PFR, given a rate of reaction versus conversion. Let's say a table. They give you the data and it was fine. You could use this data directly and you didn't need to get a rate law. Then after that we saw some theory about uh, chemistry or chemical kinetics, the rate law and some stoichiometry tables I think the part of stoichiometry tables is kind of boring, but we need that for our, uh, let's say, mathematical procedures. And finally, we are here, chapter number four, which is isothermal reactor design. So as, as you see, after you finish this uh, chapter, you will have the essentials on reactor engineering. Now, what does that mean? It means that after that, we're going to follow chapter five, which is collection and analysis of data which is essentially getting this information and apply it to a rate law. Uh, we're going to focus more in the rate law and rather than the reactor per se. And then you continue with chapter 6, which is multiple reaction. That's one important thing I want to tell you guys. We are just seeing isothermal reactor design with one reaction, which is uh, very normal. Don't think it's useless. Actually, many processes involve only one reaction, but of course you know there are sometimes you have multiple reactions. Then we see a little bit mechanism reaction, steady state heat, etc. So all these are, let's say, just an overview of the topic. And this chapter here, chapter 8, steady state heat effects is when you have non-isothermal reactors. So when the temperatures are not the same. So right now, just focus that we have same temperature, no temperature change. We will have pressure drops, so yes, we will maybe have pressure changes. And of course, in gas phase, we're going to have volume changes. We've seen that before in rate law and stoichiometry. So hopefully you are interested in the topic because it, I think it's one of the most interesting ones. Maybe mole balance is very nice but you don't get to use those equations that much and converting and reactor sizing is uh, a good chapter because you get to know how to size the reactors rate law maybe it's kind of boring if you don't like chemistry uh, if you do like it it's nice but now right now if you love engineering you're going to love this chapter so once again these pillars uh, we've seen this one chapter one chapter three and we still don't see these guys here but what you're going to see is that we can essentially start with our first step which is the sign of chemical reactors such as PFR, CSTR, batch, semi-batch and pack beds actually let me show you the content of this chapter chapter number four I just broke it in section one which is reactor engineering methodology we're going to see how to for isothermal reactors, of course, uh, how to account for, let's say, a PBR or a PFR, a CSTR, when is it convenient to use a conversion, and when is convenient to use flow rates or even concentration. I think concentration is always a go. So if you have problems or you have no idea, just go with concentration and you will be okay. Of course, you will need to use the stoichiometric tables. Now, once we see that, it's a little bit theory, don't worry, it's not that much. Then we keep going with our batch reactor analysis. I know we've seen some exercises before, 
but we're going to do a little bit more especially first order and second order uh, reactions then we see this topic which is time of cycle is very very simple but it's important to take care of it then we continue to section 3 which is CSTR or continuous tier tank reactor design we start with the first we've seen a lot of the first uh, we're going to see first uh, but only one reactor first differential of first rate sorry first rate of first order rate and second order rate and we use this number here we're going to introduce it it's cool it's going to help us a lot to understand uh, the reaction or the conversion rate is the damn color number then we keep with series CSTRs and parallel CSTRs which probably you're thinking that we saw this in chapter 2 that's true but now we're applying these first order, second order, zero order uh, rate fractions uh, then we continue with section 4 so by, by now you should know a lot of CSTR and batch reactors then we continue with PFR which is plug flow reactor we see liquid phase and then we see uh, gaseous phase liquid phase you know it's easy because volumes are the same uh, gaseous phase in general you don't have volumes you actually need to account for the change in moles and all that stuff hopefully you remember that from our previous uh, chapter all the stoichiometric tables I'm not going to explain how I use these tables I'm just going to use them maybe I tell you uh, that it's for example for a gaseous phase PFR but if you have no idea of what I'm talking about I recommend you to go chapter 3 and read again uh, make a review and then maybe you can get the topics here anyways then we continue with PBR which is packed bed reactors uh, this is the first time we're going to analyze it and we're going to do it essentially for first and second rate orders uh, we're going to analyze of course the drop in pressure because it's very very important actually once again we're going to see only one reaction because when we go to multiple reactions we're going to use the same methodology but for multiple reactions so that if you are willing to see that right now, just go to chapter 6 and you will see that a PBR with multiple reactions now the thing here is pressure drop is uh, calculated by the Ergun or Ergun equation we're going to explain that, it's a little bit theory hopefully you've seen it uh, before in momentum transfers or operations or fluidized beds, all that stuff uh, it's in the let's say, in the typical momentum course uh, you're going to see pressure drops in pipes and in beds, fluid dice beds, etc. You have no idea, I will make a small overview, review. I'm not going to be so specific, so deep in that topic, but yeah, you will at least know what we are talking about. Then we continue with section 6, which is semi-continuous reactors. Um, actually, this one here, semi-batch reactor, we're going to see it in chapter 6 because it's uh, more interesting to see it there because we're going to apply multiple reactions a single reaction is not that impressive so just wait for it chapter 6 is going to come now what we are going to see for a semi-continuous reactor is the startup of a CSTR what does that mean? is that we're going to start our new or maybe it stopped because electricity go away or it has maintenance, we have our CSTR and of course we need to fill it and we need to react it and we need to increase temperature and levels and all that stuff and of course this is in steady state, this is not normal state we need to be in this state in order to achieve our steady state we're going to analyze how much time do we need to get to this steady state and I think it's everything for this video guys this was the introduction or overview of this chapter number 4 uh, next we're going to see section number one, but I'll cut the video and see you in the next one. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. 
So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.